Hey guys, Chris with Jagan Jeepin, and uh, we are, we just found one of the probably most interesting rigs and probably one of the more interesting people at SEMA this week. It is Matt with Matt's Off-Road Recovery. Now, I'm sure you guys are all subscribers to his YouTube channel because you got like a million of them, right? Yeah, a little over a million. I think everybody's probably interested in how you got started in this. Well, it was a process. It took time. Um... But we were getting calls for recoveries. We didn't have the equipment to do it. And I'm a problem solver, and I wanted to be able to do it. So it just kind of evolved into, uh, I mean, we started with the XJ and converted it into the machine that we needed to do the majority of the work. And now as we're getting more and more work, our workload's increasing. We're needing different and more equipment to do it. Um, it was interesting work. A lot of my friends um, were interested. Like I had a couple of friends that would literally call me every day. I'm like, what did you do today? And I would tell them the story. And so that's what kind of planted the seed. Like, oh, I should start filming this so I can show them. And I'm like, and I didn't know anything about it, but I eventually landed on them. I could just put them on YouTube and then I could send links to whoever wanted to see what I did. And so that's kind of... That's kind of how that, that all started. Yeah, like so super organic growth on that side. Yeah. So yeah. if you guys haven't watched Matt's off-road recovery, his uh, XJ is pretty legendary. The yellow one, right? Isn't that yeah. right? Yeah. 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 People so, call it the banana. People call it, people the, banana. Call it the banana, yeah. <laughs> but I remember like when I first saw it, it's like, I, I think it might have had a winch on it, but it's pretty much, I mean, it's kind of your basic rig. Yeah, it's, it started out really stock. We were using mostly kinetic energy because that was like 99.9% of what we needed. It was mostly tourist cars, like rental cars, um, just barely in the sand somewhere. Or they might have driven a couple miles down a sand road, and we just had to pull them out. But um, we're getting more and more winch jobs. So, yeah, we added the winch to it. We had to take a bunch of weight out of it because weight is everything. I know... Unless you've been at Sand Hollow or Coral Pink Sand Dunes and have felt that sand, especially in the heat of the summer when there's no moisture content in it, it, it sounds ridiculous that we're, we're splitting. Like, I'm looking at two and three pound objects and, and trying to decide whether I should carry these or not. Like, it's, uh, but it's the way it is. That's, that's how you reach success as an off-road recovery guy in our area is as light as possible. Light as possible. Now, he did a lot with that single vehicle and I remember seeing some videos you got a lot of friends that come out and help once in a while yeah and um, what I think everybody interested in what you recall as like one of your most significant recoveries or maybe interesting recoveries well we've had a lot of interesting recoveries we do get the question all the time people will ask us what were they thinking do you ever ask them what they're thinking we hardly ever do we we know what they're thinking they're they're out seeking adventure they want to have they want to see something neat or something, and they don't realize the trouble that they're getting into. So I, I'm not really going to beat anybody up for going out and doing something. Like, that's, I'm going to applaud them for that. So by the time they get to you, what they're thinking is, we need help. We need help. <laughs> and, and that's what we offer. We offer help. We don't, we, we're not interested in ridicule or making fun or anything. We're here to help. And so um, the, the job we did up on Boulder Mountain that one was a really intense one. Actually, the most intense one that, that I've been on so far is one up on the above Spanish Fork, and it was a Jeep Wrangler. The guy was trying to get to a cell tower to repair it, and he followed his GPS up a road he should not have been on. And he'd gone around a corner, one of those corners that slides your back end downhill, so there's no way to back back around it. And he got around that corner, and there was no way to go but up. And that one, we were on about four hours before we got everybody back on level ground. And that's probably the most intense feeling I've had for the longest amount of time. So, so Boulder Mountain, that, that's a little ways from Santa Hollow, right? Yeah, yeah, it is. And as we're, we're getting more well-known, we're getting called out further and further. And what I do when somebody calls me from a long ways away... Um, the first thing I ask them if they've, is they've reached out to the volunteer group because there's re volunteer recovery groups in every state. And so I'll ask them first. I'd say about 60% of the time um, I don't get a phone call back because they reach out to them and they make some sort of a deal with a club that's in their area. Um, the 40% that we do, it's usually they're on some kind of a time schedule and the club can't get there fast enough um, or they weren't able to. You know, they're not getting a uh, response back, but we have been on them where they sent some volunteers to go do it. And the volunteer says, we don't, we don't want to touch this. Um, liability issues. One of them was a brand new Toyota 
Um, it was like a breeze could have flipped this thing over. And, they, and two of the guys went up there and looked at it and said, we don't want to hook up to this because we don't want to be tied into this. You know, this, this vehicle has 6,000 miles on it. So and we, don't, we went and did that job. So. I'm sure they appreciated it. You get it out in one piece? Yep, we, we got it out in one piece. So we're talking about rigs. Yes. Tell us about the one we're standing in front of. This sold international. It's like this is like, this has got all kinds of questions. Yeah, so this, this um, I'm hoping that this is going to be able to find its identity. One of the problems that we're having is bigger and bigger campers, bigger and bigger RVs um, coming into Sand Hollow. And for us to pull them out now, I have to call my friends and we'll get multiple, multiple rigs to pull these big RVs out. So I wanted something that I could just handle it myself. So, so this bigger rig is uh, going to fit the bill, but I didn't want a one trick pony. So um, a, a lot of people have suggested things like a five ton or some kind of military truck or a, or a bigger Unimog or something like that. But I, I needed something that can get back on the trails too, because we do a lot of that. And so we, I spent a lot of time talking with my, my people. So you not only go out and pull people out, wheeling is your pastime. Yeah, we do a lot of wheeling. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually fairly new to it as far as that's concerned. Um, I did a lot of wheeling for recovery before I ever started doing wheeling for fun. So my wheeling experience was born out of a necessity to rescue people and not from, I wasn't, it wasn't really something that I was passionate about to begin with, but now, I mean, I've made so many friends and I'm finding, find, and you know, sharpening my skills. We'll go out there and so that when the really crazy rescues come in, I'm more confident about them because I've already been there. I've already, I know what these angles feel like. I know what my vehicles are capable of, but this one, I want this one to be able to do, I mean, the majority of our work is around Sand Hollow. So our rigs are really tailor built for the Sand Hollow. And when we do, when we get invited on trail rides at the big events and stuff, and I'll take the Morver out there or the XJ, and you know, without fail, somebody will come up and be like, I can't believe how good this does out here. And I'm like, well, it makes sense. It's specifically built for this exact environment. So, so we're trying to hit that target with this too. So we want this to be able to go through the, the level eight trails at Sand Hollow. Right. So. so tell us, uh, tell us about like some of the, obviously we've got huge upgrades. I'm looking under the chassis. We've got all kinds of gusseting. Um, tell us about like some of the upgrades. Okay. Well, it's all hand built. So we, we hand built the frame, um, about some material we just had laying around. So you can see it's the construction is C channel, and we boxed it in. Um, I don't want the I don't want any flame flex, uh, flex so it's really rigid front to back. Um, the I mean I don't know I don't know what to say. Everything's hand built. So, but we got Rockwells down here. No, are? those are Axletech four thousands. So that that's considered a nine ton axle. They came off of. Uh, the vehicle that these were made for is called an MRAP, or I, I don't know, some people call them MRAPs. Mine, mine resistant ambush protected is what MRAP stands for. So they're, they're a brutally strong axle. They've got planetaries out there on the hubs. Um, they're designed to be a strong forward and reverse. Um, so I've got steering axles front and rear, and these are a match set. They're brand new. We got them at, in the crate, um, just uh, surplus. But they're going to be hydraulic steering, full hydraulic steering, front and rear. So even though we've got a wheelbase, we've got a wheelbase of 156 inches. Um, it's still going to have a tighter turning radius than, uh, like, it's going to be comparable to my XJ. If you guys haven't wheeled in Moab or some of the places, so San Hollow in Utah, you got some cliff roads or some shelf roads that are just absolutely crazy and some of those have switchbacks that are really really tight you mentioned one a little while ago so yeah i'm going to need i'm going to need a tight turning radius if i'm going to take this on the trails i'm planning on so i got the 16 inches uh the 16 inch shocks on here the bill steins so so this this is a rock buggy that's going to do wrecker things instead of the other way around I've got a Gen 7 big block, uh, Chevrolet big block. It's a 8.1 liter. We're actually having an 8.8 .8 built for it um, with some other goodies um, focused on, like every time when I'm talking to these performance shops for the engine and for the transmission, I'm telling them I want snow plow stuff. I don't need racing stuff. And this isn't competition buggy stuff. I want what you would build for a snow plow. I run like a mountain goat. 
Yep, yeah, that's that's the plan. Um, now I. I'm all about function. I, I care about style a little bit, obviously. I'm running these, these old iron cabs on my stuff. I got I'm running a Corvair. I'm willing to take a little bit of discomfort for a little bit of cool. Um, you got you to gotta allow me that, though. That I, I, I'm passionate about building these, and this is what keeps me passionate about it, is being able to use something cool. It's got style. Yeah. It's like, this is cool. <laughs> it's like... Yeah. So, and the whole back. I mean, you've got the whole yeah. It's all it's, assembly on it's the all back. business. We've got we've got seven winches on here. One in the back bumper, one in the front bumper. The two that are on the boom, and then the one that runs the boom. I, I was talking to Rory. Um, Rory's one, uh, out there at Moab Motorsports. I consult with him when I was building this, and uh, he told, later. Yep. And he told me he says he doesn't use the side winches very much, but when he does use them, he says nothing else will work. So. It's, it's going to be interesting to get this out and get it working. I tell you what, man, I'm like super jazzed to just meet you, hang out, you know, heard all about you, and watch some of the videos. And, uh, and yeah, this is pretty cool. I just like, and I love, we, I caught, the rig caught my eye when I walked over. I'm like, oh, yeah, match recovery. We know about match recovery. <laughs> I, I've, been, I've, I've been thinking about this is, this is like the anti SEMA rig, though, in a lot of ways, because it's so rough and rugged compared to what you're looking at. I, I mean, think it's still, perfect. It still fits here, but you know what I mean. Like, <laughs> you look down that row of cars, <laughs> they don't have a lot of It's a whole, it. whole different kind of bling. <laughs> it's yeah. a whole different kind. Of, it is cool bling. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. All right. Anything else you want to add no, before we sign no, up? I think we're good. I, I appreciate the taking the time to talk to me about this. All right. This is what I love. Cool, guys. Thanks for joining us. Um, again, Matt's Off-Road Recovery. You can find these guys on uh, on YouTube, and they are posting all the time. Three times a week. Yeah. So, again, Chris with Gone Jeepin'. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Matt's Off-Road Recovery and us. See you guys. Mm-hmm.